In this video, we'll be taking apart the Motorola Moto Edge 50 Fusion. If you're interested in seeing more videos like this, make sure you subscribe and click on notification bell so you'll be notified once I upload a new video. Also, if you need any tools, there are links in the description. We'll start off by removing the SIM tray. Looking at the SIM tray, we can see a red rubber gasket around the opening. Now heat needs to be applied to the back cover using either a hairdryer or a heat gun to loosen up the adhesive underneath and then a pry tool can be used to pry the back cover off. I prefer to use a hairdryer since there's less of a chance of damaging any of the components inside by overheating them. Here's a better look at the vegan leather back cover. The LED flash board is located here. If you needed to replace the camera lens covers, those can be replaced by applying heat and prying them off. So you won't need to take apart the phone to replace those. Now there are 15 Phillips screws which need to be removed. Looking at the tall plastic cover, there are some antenna lines drawn which are light gray color lines, including the NFC antenna which is located here. Here's a look at the other side. There's a large area of graphite film to help transfer heat which needs to be peeled off. The battery cables can now be disconnected, followed by the rest of the cables. The three coaxial cables on the right side of the board can be disconnected by just popping them off. There are two Phillips screws holding down the main board. Looking at the main board, we see the 50 megapixel primary camera, and below that is a 13 megapixel ultra wide lens. The main camera is the only one with OIS or optical image stabilization. There's a secondary microphone on the top corner, a liquid damage indicator sticker which is that white sticker, and thermal paste on top of this chip. As for the camera connectors, those can be disconnected by just popping them off. The proximity sensor is located on the other side, and we have a better look at the 32 megapixel front facing camera. There's also graphite film and copper tape on the back shields, as well as thermal paste to help transfer heat. Once the copper tape and graphite film have been peeled back, we see additional thermal compound on top of the processor and the RAM. Here's a better look with the thermal compound removed.
There are four additional Phillips screws which need to be removed. Once that metal cover has been removed, the fingerprint scanner cable can be disconnected. Looking at the SIM reader board, we see another liquid damage indicator sticker which is that white sticker, as well as the primary microphone which is covered by the shield. The SIM reader is located on the other side. And here's the sub board or charger port board. We can see a red rubber gasket around the charger port. This is the bottom speaker and there's some thermal paste underneath it to help transfer heat. Once the speaker has been removed, we see an antenna board on the bottom corner, which the blue coaxial cable is connected to. The vibrator motor is located here, which is held on with some adhesive to replace that just to apply some heat and pry it off. And the same goes for the fingerprint sensor. For anyone worried about accidentally inserting the SIM ejector tool in the wrong hole, on this phone you don't need to worry since both the filters on the bottom and top, as well as the microphones themselves, are seated above the holes so they won't get damaged. In order to pry the battery off, there are no pry tabs or pull pouches provided, so you're going to have to apply some isopropyl alcohol around the edges of the battery and let it sit for about 30 seconds to a minute so it eats away at the adhesive underneath, making it easier to pry it off. This is the 5000 mAh battery. Once the battery has been removed, we can see this flex cable which connects the main board to the SIM reader board as well as the sub board, and the flex cable for the screen which is routed through an opening in the mid frame. If you need to replace the screen, you'd have to remove the back cover, the screws on the top plastic cover as well as the cover itself. You'd then have to disconnect the battery cables as well as the screen cable from the main board, pry the battery off, giving access to the screen cable, at which point you would heat up the front of the phone where the screen is to loosen up the adhesive underneath, pry the old screen off, apply a new adhesive, reapply the new screen making sure you run the flex cable back to the opening in the midframe, and reassemble the phone. Once the flex cables have been peeled back, we see a 3D layer of graphite which runs underneath the battery as well as the motherboard. The flex cable for the volume keys and power buttons located here, which is held down with some adhesive. If you need to replace that, not only would you have to peel off the flex cable from the frame at this point, you'd also have to pry the screen off from the other side, since the flex cable for is routed through an opening in the midframe. And finally, the earpiece speaker is located on top, which is also held on with some adhesive. In order to replace that, just apply some heat and pry it off. For the repairability score on this phone, I give it a 5 out of 10. Now it's time to put the phone back together. Once everything's back in place, apply a new adhesive and reapply the back cover. Flip over the phone, power it on, and you're done. I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you in the next one.